da, 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 da. I'm always holding up one book or another with a smile because you never know. Hey, everybody, and welcome to Chef AJ Live. I'm your host, Chef AJ, and this is where I introduce you to amazing people just like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. Today's guest who's going to be doing a cooking demo with recipes from her new book that was just released today, and I'm going to show you where you can get it. I'm going to link to it. It's called The Plant-Based Diet. She's been on the show before, and you loved her, and so you asked for her to come back, and she will. She's going to be making two recipes from the book. She's going to be making the super green guacamole and another recipe which doesn't have a picture but i'll show you it's called mushroom pate please welcome jl fields and congratulations on the new book how many do you have now like 10 thank you no it's so exciting this is number eight so um, and i keep telling everyone this might be the last one for a while i am exhausted you know you just came out with a book yourself they are hard work <laughs> people that you know be like well, can i have the recipe and it's like well, i already got 10 books what more do you need but yeah it, right. it, it does it takes a long time it's like birthing a baby it is. It is. Um, yeah. And it felt like this one, I mean, I wrote it during the pandemic. We've been like building up to it and I'm just like, oh my gosh, it's finally here. And so I'm excited. I'm excited to share it with people. And what better way to celebrate book launch day than with you. Thanks for having me back. This is great. So guys, I'm going to find the book on Amazon and link to it in a second, but let's let JL Fields get started with her demo and tell us what this book is about. Okay. I will. So first off, I feel like I'm going to have to introduce you to my dog, Harry. I don't know if you can hear him barking. Harry? Are you going to be a good boy? He's really adorable. He's a Chihuahua pug, but he's also obnoxious. So uh, he won't let me pick him up. You might have to meet him in a minute. Aww. So, <laughs> so, um, so some of you know me from my books, uh, The Vegan Air Fryer, Vegan Pressure Cooking, Vegan Meal Prep, Fast and Easy Vegan. Um, what else? Uh, vegan Baking for Beginners. That's what I, I did last time I was with you, um, AJ. And this book is called The Complete Plant-Based Diet. And I'm super excited. A lot of people, um, AJ and I have for years, we, you and I have talked about like the whole plant-based and vegan and the schisms in the community. And so I thought people are going to pass out when they see that I wrote a book called The Complete Plant-Based Diet. Because for some reason, people seem to think that if someone eats cupcakes, they don't eat kale. Like, like why can't we hold two opposing thoughts at the same time? Am I right? Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, but, you know, we really do want to create recipes that appeal to everybody. And so that was why I was excited to write this book book because I really wanted to talk about what plant-based means to me, which is I like to say I'm a noun. I'm a vegan. I'm wearing my vegan potion uh, sweatshirt today, uh, but I eat lots of things and I eat a plant-based diet. And so um, AJ has had a zillion people on who've told you before, but just to make sure we're all on the same page, plant-based, you know, is very simple. There are five food groups that we're talking about when we talk about eating vegan or plant-based. Vegetables, obviously, fruit, nuts and seeds, grains, beans and legumes. So um, that's what is the heart of this book. And then there are some people who uh, choose to avoid certain kinds of foods based on dietary choices, based on health conditions. So this book was written with an eye toward no oil or no salt used in the recipes as is. There's some options for those. It's kind of the reversal. You know how people write books and they'll be like, no oil option. I did the opposite. So I did like how to make it and then in parentheses or a tablespoon of oil. You do you, babe, whatever you got to do. So anyway, today what I wanted to do is the last time I was here with you, AJ, we talked about umami, which is the fifth flavor. The springs is sense of meatiness and savory to our cooking. People really were excited about that. I've been teaching classes about that for the last few months. And so um, I wanted today to show you ways that you can pack tons of flavor into un, um, sort of unsuspecting ingredients. And so the super green guacamole that um, I think, AJ, you're going to send the recipe out to them afterwards. Is that right? Absolutely. It, I can't put it in now because I'm limited to 900 characters, but it will be in the show notes about five minutes after the broadcast. Perfect. Um, so um, the super green guacamole isn't really guacamole at all, but anybody who writes recipes or writes books, you know, we start to take liberty with different words and phrases, but there is an avocado in it, but there's so much more. So I want to show you a few tricks and things um, along the way as I make this. So the elements of the super green guacamole are actually kale and spinach, um, fresh kale, fresh spinach, 
frozen peas, but you could use fresh peas if you want. But hey, I live in the real world and I always have some frozen veggies on hand because you just never know. Um, and then we're going to keep going with the green theme. So we're going to have an avocado, we're going to have jalapeno, and we're going to have lime juice. And so what we're going to start is sort of kind of make chopped veggies, but then we add the avocado in and we add the lime juice, and then it's going to turn it sort of into a dip, almost like a puree. So one of the things um, in your kitchen, so I teach classes for home cooks, nothing fancy here. I did not go to a culinary school. I am not a trained chef. I do teach culinary students now at the University of New Mexico in the culinary program, how to create uh, plant-based food. But my, I, I'm here for you who are, are cooking at home. But if you don't have a digital scale in your, for, or in your kitchen, I'm going to highly recommend it. Um, some people use it for portion control. I use it for recipes. I use it when I'm creating recipes and then when I want to have recipes. So this recipe actually makes a lot of food, but I just wanted to use a little bit of it. So when I am starting to do my kale, my beautiful, beautiful kale that I got for my uh, weekly produce delivery and my spinach. I just take the recipe calls for 10 ounces each. Well, I wanted to have it. So I just set it here on the scale with this colander and start putting it in. And it's just a great way to kind of cut recipes in half. So I just wanted to share that with you really quick. So I'm going to do this in the food processor and we're going to start by adding the kale and the spinach. Now this is a huge food processor, but these leaves are huge too. Now, those of you who have a Vitamix are gonna say, can I do this in my Vitamix? And the answer is yes. I have a Vitamix too, it's over here somewhere. But when I'm making dips and purees and things like nut and seed butter, I want all the stuff. And it gets really irritating to me when all the good stuff is stuck under that blade in the Vitamix. <laughs> so that's what I turned to my trusty food processor. So I'm gonna first get, just get these, um, start kind of chopping up the spinach and the kale before I start adding some of the good stuff. So I'm gonna make a little room, not that this isn't the good stuff, hello, it's the great stuff. Um, here, and AJ, you know, as always, if you're seeing questions and you wanna ask me, you can always interrupt. Me. Yeah, well, I agree with you on the food scale and they're not expensive. I've gotten one for $15 at Bed Bath & Beyond and you can use a coupon because I just think things come out so much better and accurate when they're weighed rather than measured. Totally. And I'll tell you what, when I was writing the, the baking book, you can imagine. Sorry, I have so much stuff in here that it, it's really fighting me. <laughs> That's okay. And, that, and people don't realize, that, especially with baking, I was a restaurant pastry chef. You didn't measure things in cups. Everything was weighed, even, you know, everything, the flour, everything. Absolutely. And truth be told, the reason I got this scale was when I started sourdough baking because I feed my sourdough all the time. And so I feed it, um, you know, a one-one ratio. So like one ounce of flour to one ounce of water. Okay, so I'm going to quickly pull this and just start to chop my veggies and make some onion. This is my little trusty level sous chef. People always ask about the appliances. I know they always ask you too, AJ. Um, I really like this food processor. It's massive and um, it's really going to do a great job later on some soaked cashews that I am going to show you. That's the surprise recipe, but I'm just going to let this go a little bit more. Let me get some of the other ingredients together. So I'm going to show you a little trick with jalapeno. Some of you probably already do this, but I, so I have to use these gloves because I work in the food world. And um, so when people want to go after me saying, why are you using things like these gloves? Well, that's because it's the world I live in. Um, but I am going to show you why I'm wearing them today because I'm about to put a jalapeno in this and I don't want to touch anything like my puppy um, or my cat. So I'm going to use these gloves so that I can touch and handle this jalapeno. Came from my sister's garden, so it's turned this really great red and green. It'll be nice and spicy um, because we drove. We were in Illinois last week doing some social distance visiting with the family, and I came back with some beautiful produce from my sister's garden. So I'm going to keep a couple seeds in here because I want that heat. So I'm just going to quickly chop this, and I'm going to put these um, pieces of jalapeno in the food processor. And then I'm going to add the peas. So just frozen peas that I thawed. And I'm going to wait for just a moment before I start to add some of this liquid. So I'm gonna again, just go back to the pulsing and the chopping. Uh, 
probably know when you're using a food processor, you'll always see the instructions that say scrape down the sides because sometimes you can get these big pieces down here. But oh, the verdant color here, you guys. This is, you know, when they say you eat with your eyes first, this is the So now I'm going to bring this over. I've got a couple of kale leaves. I can use a little help, but I want you to see how beautiful this is turning, this bright, bright green. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add um, some lime juice because the theme is green. And then I'm going to add some avocado, which you probably all know the basic way to get into your avocado is to here, get that seed out. And then because I have these gloves on, I can just start scooping this avo right in here. So right now, just as a reminder, what do we have going on in here? We have kale, we have spinach, we have peas, we have jalapeno, and we have avocado, just nothing but the food. And this avocado is going to start to make this really, really creamy. And um, I'm going to get these leaves in here. And then if I add any other liquid, which I might need a little, depending on the consistency, that's when I'm going to start either drizzling in water or I'm going to drizzle in um, a little bit more of the lime juice. So we'll just see what I'm doing. And any questions, AJ, for me? Um, you, you mentioned what your uh, just comments. Jan says your hair looks great. She loves it. Kelly wants to know what size of the food processor and what model of the brand. That is a great question. I think this is a 12 quart and it's Breville and it's the Breville sous chef specifically. It is not inexpensive. Um, I just want to tell you that, but I also considered it um, sort of like an investment I made with my, oh, this is so pretty. You wait till you see it. Um, <laughs> um, I considered it an investment like I did my Vitamix because keep in mind, I cook for a living, right, you guys? But also um, I am big into batch cooking and bulk cooking. And so a 12 quart, and it actually has an insert um, that you can put inside of it. So when you don't need as much volume with a 12 quart, you can put the insert in and um, process it like four to six quarts instead. So it's kind of handy. And then you can chop multiple things and take the insert out and then keep going. So basically it's like having two food processor crafts. So um, anyway, this was so quick and I needed no extra liquid. Let me show you what this is looking like. And then I'm going to show you why I'm going to do a surprise um, second recipe for you. But the idea behind today's topic was about flavors. I want you to think about what I put in here. So kale, we've had kale. I'll eat a piece of kale. I'll just eat it, right? You do too. But you got to admit, you want a little something to go with it, right? Spinach, absolutely. Spinach is wonderful. And you might want a little flavor to go with it. Peas are terrific. Same thing. When you start to combine foods to think in terms of color, and to think in terms of flavor, you start to put beautiful things together. So I want you to look at this and look how gorgeous this, this dip is. So I call it a guacamole. Um, it's not, but it has avocado and it started as guacamole. And then I was like, JL, can you really just put like a guacamole recipe in your book? It seems like you need to do something a little bit more, I don't know, elevated. So that's how it became the super green guac. And so I use this in some really, really fun ways. First, I just want you to see how beautiful it is when you get it ready to pre present. Imagine putting this on your table during the holiday season. I might even throw a few dried cranberries on top just to make a visual pop. And then I'm gonna add some scallions on top. And I could set this out with toast points. I could set this out with fresh veggies. And it's a beautiful uh, appetizer just as is, but you can also, I will put it on, um, use it as a spread for sandwiches, put it on a wrap. Um, I definitely use it as a dip. I've used it, I will serve it a dollop of it when I'm doing a tofu scramble for breakfast. So there are lots of ways you can use this. Now, the reason I'm telling, giving you these examples, and I also want to show you, I didn't use salt for this. I um, actually used, I'm going to use the spicy umami blend. This is a recipe from the new book where it's a combination of spices to use as an alternative. To, um, to salt. So I'm just going to take a little bit. And again, we've got some color because we have paprika because AJ and I both love smoked paprika. And so I'm going to sprinkle this over the top. 
So you can see what normally someone might do a pinch of salt. And if you use salt, go for it. But I'm just going to kind of scatter this over this. And it's going to look fun and pretty when we set it down. And then right before we serve, I'll just stir it together. So this has paprika and dried mushrooms and um, garlic. So just lots of flavor without um, a lot of added ingredients. And uh, the recipe I have in the book, I call it, uh, it's the spicy umami blend, but I call it uh, no salt, little salt, gimme salt. So it gives you whatever your options are. <laughs> but also in the book, I have a recipe called plant pesto. And it's a, a pesto without basil. Uh, I use kale instead, again, kind of going for a really hearty leafy green. And um, I use pistachios instead of trying to do like a vegan, um, cheese, you know, uh, so, so the pistachios kind of stand in for that hard cheese, but I wanted to show you another way you can use this super green guacamole. So I have a recipe for um, something that I call mushroom pate. And so I'm going to start with, wait for it. It's this simple. Are you ready? I'm going to start with balsamic vinegar. I did this last time and remember how everyone was like, like what, like, this is one of my oil free um, saute choices is I will do a little balsamic vinegar instead of broth. So I'm gonna get the heat up. I'm using a cast iron skillet. I've got some sweet onions. I'm gonna throw these in. And then I have two cups of chopped, chopped mushrooms. That's all I've got going on in here, you guys. So um, what I'm gonna do is get this going on a high heat for about five to seven minutes. Uh, and I just want to kind of sweat these mushrooms down and uh, cook up these onions a little bit. And then what's gonna happen in this recipe is I soaked in uh, hot water cashews. So these cashews, the mushroom, the onion um, that are gonna have an amazing flavor from the balsamic vinegar are all gonna go back into the food processor. And then I'm gonna stir in a half a cup of the super green block and stir it together. And you'll see this color and this thickness that resembles pate but we know pate comes from, you know, traditional pate is animal based and this is a vegan pate. And it's gonna have that meatiness from the mushrooms, from the balsamic vinegar, from the acidic um, juices that are in it. So we're just gonna saute that for a minute. And um, any other questions, AJ? Well, that no, I can question, answer? but Carlissa said, what can you substitute for the peas? But you didn't use any peas. I did use peas. Oh, you did? Well, yeah, the, yeah. Why, why don't I see it in the recipe? Oh, yes, you're right. One 10 ounce package, frozen peas thawed. Okay. Okay. Thank goodness. Cause I, you know, you know, cause you write books too. The first time someone writes you to tell you that there's something wrong, there will always be something wrong in a book. That's just a fact. So I was like, really day one, we already found my first errata. <laughs> so, um, I don't know. What would you use in place of please peas? I use the peas honestly, because I like the texture. I like to add the protein from peas and I was going for something all green. Um, are you asking because you are allergic or because you hate peas? Um, I was thinking maybe asparagus or, or broccoli. Oh, you know what? If I were going to do asparagus, you know what I think I would do? I would do a quick blanch, right? Yeah. And then just chop it up. That would be really nice actually. And that would add a really interesting, I like that idea a lot. And frankly, you know what? That a great, I would use leftover steamed broccoli. What a great way to use leftovers if you actually have leftovers. So um, I like that idea a lot, AJ. Um, so some things that I, that I wanted to talk about when it comes to this flavor is, you know, we talked about umami before and I hate to bore you with all the details and I won't go into it again. Everyone go back to the show with AJ where we talked about umami. But really what I'm trying to encourage you to do in this book and in your cooking in general is to simply... Think about simplicity and then slowly add layers of flavor until you hit the sweet spot. So what I mean by that is when I started the super green guac recipe, it was about the vegetables. It was the spinach. It was the kale. It was the peas. It was the jalapeno. I knew I wanted to see, uh, add some scallions at the end. Lime juice, because I, apparently I was on a roll at that point with my green. But then it's like, okay, so now what's going to make that flavor pop? And actually, so the flavor going back to, it was the jalapeno and the lime juice. I was like, what happens if I just put a jalapeno? you in first. And so I've got kale, spinach, peas, and now I've got a jalapeno and I'm like, okay, I'm liking it. Then I add the acidic from the lime juice and I'm like, now we're getting somewhere. We're getting that sort of juiciness, that acidic, that sour. And then I thought, you know, this is a recipe that really doesn't need 
You know, a lot of people, if you're trying to reduce salt, this isn't one where you have to come up with a replacement for salt. You don't need it, but you want some flavors to pop. And when you do have a, a spice blend, like I got, we, we were talking about this last time, AJ, I've got all kinds of spices that other people put together that I could put together myself if I wanted. They call this one um, an all-purpose seasoning for pork. Well, yeah, I don't eat pork. So, but what's in it? Black pepper, garlic red and green bell the pepper, shallot, parsley, um, and spices. So I have lots of these things and I'll just start to put pinches in. And that's just a way to bring out lots and lots of flavor. Um, AJ, what, these days, what I know you and I both are loving smoked paprika. What's your go-to spice these days? I love smoked paprika still with a little yeah. bit, with a little of chipotle powder. Those two together are my favorite. Aren't they the best? And yep. I got to tell you, um, I'm not trying to do a promo, but I got to tell you, a game changer. Um, so AJ had um, these, these flavored balsamic vinegars sent to me as a thank you last time I was on. Girl, this blazing habanero balsamic. Have you had this one? It's so good. And for people it's that don't so like heat, good. sweet heat is, is like that, but with less of the heat. It's so it good. I'm, I'm, so mm -hmm. good. And do you know what I did with it this week? I made some um, split pea soup. I made some split pea soup uh, yesterday. Speaking of simplicity, I, my husband and I drove to Illinois. We have to social distance visit my family right now due to an illness. And um, so we had drove 13 hours one way, drove back um, 13 hours on Saturday. So we kind of came back to an empty house, right? But I always have dry beans in my cupboard. So I had um, split peas. I had a lonely little red potato sitting on the counter. And I had a green bell pepper my sister sent me home with. And uh, I took all of that and some veggie broth that I had in the refrigerator and a few spices and just made a very simple split pea soup, nothing but food in the pot for about, I did about 12 minutes. I live at elevation. So beans have to cook a little bit longer, but it was going to be split pea soup. And I was going to use an immersion blender. So who cares if I overcook it? Right. But that blazing habanero balsamic, that's what I served on top. Of it. I just drizzled it. It was beautiful. The color popped and it gave you just the amount of flavor that you needed. Okay, so I want to show you how gorgeous, um, I got to be careful because I got my heavy duty casser, but just how gorgeous sauteed mushrooms, onions, and balsamic vinegar look. So look at this. And now this is going to go in the food processor carefully because now I'm going to make my pate. So first I want to get the um, cashews going a little bit. So again, um, I soak these in hot water. I often, because I do like to use um, soaked nuts and seeds in my cooking, often on the weekend when I'm doing my batch cooking, I will just uh, put some, I'll just put some of the seeds and the nuts in water in a, um, in a, jar in the refrigerator for a couple of days. And then after a couple of days, I'll rinse it and then it's ready. So it's one more, one of those things where when you see a recipe that says soak cashews for 30 minutes, you can absolutely do that. But it's also one of those things you can prep on the weekend. And so kind of like French fries, AJ and I like our French fries in the air fryer. I like to soak my French fries uh, because the texture is super amazing and it kind of pulls out some of that starch, but I rarely soak them for an hour before I do, I make my air, my air fried French fries. When we bulk and batch prep food on the weekends, I have a bowl that is probably three size, three times this size filled with fresh cut potatoes, water, and it just sits in the refrigerator and I just rinse them and pat them dry as I need them throughout the week. So that's just another little tip. So let's get- um, Just so you know, Carlissa says she actually hates peas and Rosa is suggesting edamame instead because they're almost the same Ooh, color. Edamame. Why didn't I think of edamame? That's a great idea because it would have almost the exact same texture. So yeah, I get it. I kind of thought it was probably a dislike. Um, it's crystal, right? Um, so I get it. Um, we, hey, we don't all love everything. I'm going to move this over here. This and there's a question from Lissa. Do you have a favorite yes. online source to order split peas and other dried beans? Oh, well, yes and no. So I used to be a member of the Rancho Gordo Bean Club. I'm a huge fan. Um, and then, but I had too many beans in my house and we weren't eating them. So I canceled my, my membership. And let me just tell you that during the pandemic, I was one sad sack because I was like, I'd be cooking the heck out of those Rancho Gordo beans. So I love Rancho Gordo. Um, they're sort of um, 
kind of specialty heirloom beans. Um, they're wonderful. But I also um, order, I, I just buy mine in bulk at my local stores here in town. Um, so I live in Colorado Springs. So I'll go to like Mountain Mama or I might go to um, even our King Supers has some of the beans in bulk. I have seen, um, is, is it Shiloh Farms? I don't know if that's what it's called. Shiloh something, S-H-I-L-O-H, which you can get um, from Amazon in, in bulk. And I got to tell you, I know that people have strong feelings about Amazon, but I got to tell you, um, while I was doing my social distancing and not grocery shopping, um, I found buying, getting bulk ingredients from, from there was really helpful. Uh, so I know that's not super helpful for you, but um, I just tend to kind of get them from my local stores. I want you to see right now what this is looking like. So I've got, I just started up with the cashews that were just um, chopped up a little bit. Now I've got my mushrooms and I've got my uh, onion. And remember, all we added was balsamic vinegar. So not a whole lot else is going on right now. Mary's asking me where I order my spices from, and I order them from local spicery. Nick DeVorn has been on the show many times, and I will give you a link to free SOS free samples with code AJ. And he has some new ones like the Showstopper Topper, which is the salt-free bagel seasoning. And he also is coming up with broth. So I'll post that link. I'm sorry if my voice is back again. We're almost ready. Uh, so I want you guys to see how quickly this is coming together. So I said, five minutes, what, five, seven minutes sauteing onion, mushroom, and balsamic vinegar, period. That's it. Look at the change of color um, with the mushrooms. So this is that meatiness, that meaty pate we're kind of used to seeing. So now I'm going to throw this in a bowl because then we're going to add the, the super green guacamole. The recipe, like I said, for this pate actually calls for pesto. Um, and I have a, a recipe in the book called plant pesto. And I made that actually this week, this past week while I was in Illinois, I was staying in an RV in my parents' backyard. And I taught a cooking class to show you can make fancy plant-based food in an RV even. Um, and I did use the plant-based pate, but it was funny as I was preparing for today and I knew I was going to be making this super green guac. I was like, but you know what? I really want to show different ways that you can use this guac. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to avoid, I'm going to show you. So I, I did, I showed you the scallions because they're so pretty and amazing if you're doing this as a dip, but I don't really want those in when I'm making my pate because it's all about texture. So you can see, I'm going to do a half a cup of this super green guac. And now I'm going to add it to the mushroom and cashew mixture. And I'm going to just quickly fold it together. And we have just made a super fancy, so super wholesome, and really, really flavorful, meaty mushroom pate. So what do you guys think? Is this something you could see yourself doing? Does it seem simple enough? Because then that's the name of my game. And I like this green color in here because I don't know if you guys ever did pate before. I did, I'm not gonna lie. And when I was in France, I would go and it was like one of those things I would order at these restaurants and they would just have platters of them and they would all have really interesting colors and texture. And that's what this is reminiscent of to me. So there you go. Just a very simple combo of a super green guac, completely wholesome, combined with some mushrooms, onions, with some balsamic, and you are ready to roll and have a fancy mushroom pate for a dinner party. So that's all I have for you is for the cooking side. So I would be happy to answer any questions that you might have. I'm posting the link to the book again. A few people said they already purchased it. So thank you. Oh, thank well, what you. I'd like to know is I, I, you know, every time I ask the chef what their favorite recipe from the book is, they'll say, well, it's like uh, telling you who my favorite child is, but I always don't have a problem coming up with my favorite in the book. I know what one of my favorites from your book is, and I, cause I have earmarked. Well, first of all, these watermelon fries sound unbelievable. I have not made that yet but I love this one. It's so easy. The caramelized onion jam, jam, I mean, three ingredients. What could be easier? Thank you. And you know, I've heard a lot of people saying that they felt like just the staples chapter in and of itself was worth it for them. Cause I really spent time on the staples in the back because that's where you get such a boost of flavor 
with the simple ingredients that you're using on in there. So thank, I'm glad you like that, AJ. I do have one, a favorite. I'm looking for it right now. Um, and Anthea wants to know how you serve the pate. And I think it'd be perfect for the upcoming holidays for Thanksgiving, both of them actually. But the pate Yeah, absolutely. So, um, so I, I make um, fresh sourdough. I just made it last night. It's a running joke. I make sourdough bread every week for my husband because he loves sandwiches. He does his tofurkey slices, his bio life cheese and his bread. And I always eat one piece because <laughs> I like it when it's really hot right out of the oven. You know what I mean? But I'm telling you, toast up some crusty bread and serve that with the, the pate. But I had it um, as a uh, as a dip on a salad this week because I made it this week for a cooking class. But I would just put it out with a beautiful crudite. Like if I were having people over for the holidays, I would just have really beautiful, fresh vegetables and fruits. Uh, and then a variety of dips. I'd have the super green guac. I'd have the plant pesto. I'd have that caramelized onion jam because that's just something you can dollop on things. And so I think of it as um, also a substitute for mayonnaise. So if you were trying to make some kind of yummy sandwich, you could just smear this on um, whatever you're using, whether it's a big colored green, big lettuce, lettuce leaf, or maybe a whole grain tortilla or bread, and just and just spread this on it and just have that kind of be your creaminess. So it's really fun. There are no there are no limits with it for sure. Um, I was trying to find my favorite recipe. It's so funny. Um, when your book just comes out, you're like, what chapter was that in? It's a gumbo. Um, and it's not traditional, obviously, but there are lots of things that we don't traditionally do when we're doing a heart of palm or <laughs> heart of palm. I just went past my heart of palm recipe. Um, that one is actually really fun. I have a scallops provencal where the heart of palm is actually stands in as the scallop. And you just sear the heart of palm and then set it aside and then just do this really flavorful bean. I use just tiny red bean mixture and then put the heart of palm back in. Really pretty, briny. Um, but this gumbo fila um, that I, I, I learned about it from Allende Howell. He was doing one of his... Um, I think it was back when Periscope was a thing. He was doing a, a cooking um, thing from his little kitchen in LA. And um, he was talking about gumbo. I don't know if you, if you call it filet or phila, F-I-L-E. And traditional gumbo is thickened with okra, but you can use this gumbo phila, which is actually just a bunch of spices and seasonings. And it makes it thick. And it's a quinoa mushroom gumbo. And it is just, um, it's got leafy greens. Um, it, it's just one of my absolute favorites. That's neat. Let's see if we have any. I'd love to, let's see, which I'd love to hear how to learn your plant-based way of living on the road or living in an RV. Yeah. Um, so, it, well, I have a great example because I did it this week. So, so, you know, this is what we did. And I mean, every situation is going to be different. So I don't have an RV. I don't live in an RV. My parents have one and I couldn't be in their house because of COVID. And so they let us stay in their little Winnie, um, what do they call them? Mini Winnies, it's a, a little Winnebago. And it was perfect. It was like being in a studio apartment. But what I did was what I would do even at home, which is when I approach food and how I eat and trying to you know, live healthfully, I'm a planner. And I think that's the number one thing for anybody. If you're trying to eat differently, if you're trying to get healthier, planning is the key. So whether I'm planning for, by the way, we are in my kitchen. So my kitchen is about the size of my RV that I was in for a week. So I was just about to say, whether you're in your home and I'm like, oh, um, or an RV, you know, you have to think about what, like, what do you need? So when we approach it, my husband's vegan too. So when we approach this, this traveling, first we were going to be stopping in one town to see his mom and do a social distance visit. So we're like, okay, there we're not going to have access to cooking. So let's find the best possible situations on the road. So I pulled out my app, got my happy cow opened up and found this amazing place that had very simple seitan tacos. It was a really nice restaurant actually. Um, and like this, um, what do they call it? It was a roasted um, blackened hummus. And it was just like everything I wanted after driving 13 and a half hours. And so, but I planned ahead. I knew I could get that. The next day we knew we were going out um, to eat outside. And so we found a place with outdoor seating that had just, I wanted beans and, and grains, you know, beans and rice, right? So I found a Mexican restaurant that had vegan beans. Then when I thought about what am I going to do in the RV, how much space do I have? Well, my refrigerator was about this big. My freezer was about this big and the counter, like all of the cupboards, it turns out are not really for food in an RV. They're for things like um, 
fire extinguishers <laughs> and cleaning equipment. You know what I mean? There's like not a lot of space. So what I did was I, um, I know that Hy-Vee grocery store in the Midwest has lots of really vegan, good vegan food, good organic food, lots of healthy food. So I downloaded the app, ordered food, and then stopped at a Hy-Vee before I got to the town that I was going to be staying in and had the, the groceries delivered to my trunk. And so what did I get? Beans grains, fresh produce, and knew that I was going to have fresh produce from my dad's garden and my sister's garden. So that's kind of how I planned for it. But I knew what meals I was going to have. I brought my instant pot. Of course, I brought my instant pot. I brought my three quart instant pot. And I made a vegetable curry one day, uh, made a tofu scramble in it, did the heart of uh, palms, uh, Provençal in it. And so uh, it's planning, planning, planning. And then it's also thinking about um, not wanting to have leftovers, right? So it's like thinking and cooking, cooking for two. So like if I made something, it was like Dave and I are going to eat that and then it's going to be gone. So I'm not adding more stuff into the RV while I'm doing it. And I'm making just enough food to keep us full and satisfied. No need to go overboard. So hopefully that is somewhat helpful. You know, and I mean, you can even get like mama says delivered to your location if you wanted to, if you couldn't cook, for example. What's Mama Says? Mama Says is a food delivery company that makes a, a vegan line and they make an SOS free line and it comes cold. It's actually very good. I've had- Oh, from, is it like Vistro or one of those prepared kinds I'm of I'm not sure, but it, you can either freeze it. It comes refrigerated and it lasts in the fridge for a couple of weeks. And they, they make a, like a line for people to follow Dr. Esselstyn. They make a richer oh. line. And, yeah, so I'm just saying for, you know, if there's a will, there's a way. Carol That's a great wants, idea. Yeah, it is. Carol wants to know where you got your t-shirt. Oh, so there's some uh, a great guy named Andy Tabar. Um, he and his buddy Paul have a podcast called The Bearded Vegans. And he has a store called Compassion Co., um, Compassion Company. I think the logo is back here. And so he, because he, he makes his living at VegFest, and there have been no VegFest since February. <laughs> so um, he has started to take orders online, and you order first, and then after he gets enough of the orders, he places an order. And so this is for Halloween. This is Vegan Potion. And, um, and he's a, a, it's a great way to spend your vegan dollar if you want to support a great guy um, and know that it's going to help the animals. Nice. And did there, is there Oprah in your gumbo? Marcy wants to know. There's not. And I'll tell you, so I've got a funny story for you. So publishers can be very, well, you, AJ knows, can be very opinionated about things. So you can suggest some recipes and then they're going to be like, people aren't going to, they're like, they don't want that. And so I was highly encouraged to consider something else because some people just think of okra and slime, right? And so, um, but that's why I had that flashback to Allende Howell, who he's wonderful, um, his, um, his, his recipe and that gumbo fillet. And I was like, oh my God, that's amazing. Uh, but I want to tell you kind of related to that. So I wrote a book called The Vegan Air Fryer and I loved, love my Brussels sprouts recipe from that book. And I wanted it on the cover. And my um, my publisher was like, we can't put it on the cover. And I was like, why? And he's like, well, some people don't like Brussels sprouts. And I'm like, well, but there's other stuff. And they're like, he, he said, no, they so don't like Brussels sprouts that they won't buy your book because you had Brussels sprouts on the cover. It's like, I had no idea people felt so strongly. So anyway, long story, getting back to no okra, but you could add some. I found the recipe of the mushroom and quinoa gumbo and it calls for filet powder where, where do you yes. get that and you know, do you make it or do you buy it i bought it and I, and that's the the filet powder i was telling you about that Allende talked about so it's called gumbo filet seasoning i got it from amazon and um i want to see if they actually have the um ingredients on here or not this is what it looks like and it makes it it, it makes the thick sauce but what you smell when you it's almost like an anise and fennel, um, just really rich, really flavorful. And it just takes a little bit. And that is the secret ingredient that replaces the um, okra in the gumbo. Right. Jeannie says, do either of you have gluten-free plant-based collections? So all four of my books are gluten-free. I'll let JL answer regarding hers. Um, None of mine are, are gluten-free, like 100% gluten-free. I always say that if there's gluten-free recipes, it's usually because it was just accidentally gluten-free. And it turns out, turns out that I end up cooking a lot that is gluten-free. But if you are celiac and completely avoiding um, gluten, it is not. None of my books are gluten-free books. But um, as I did in most of my books, I almost always, when it's 
advisable and I believe that it will taste good. I will give options like gluten-free options or a soy-free option or even a nut-free or salt or oil-free option. I've learned more about celiac disease than I, in this last month, interviewing people for the GI Health Summit. And boy, oh. it's, uh, it's, uh, it's more common than you'd realize. I yeah, mean, it's, yeah. There's, I mean, I think, and a lot of people I think are getting um, tested more, right? I mean, yeah. I think, and they're finding out, yeah, so. You know, it's just, I think it has to do with whatever they do to stuff in this country, because I know people that, that when they go to Europe, they can eat the bread and they can eat the pasta and they don't get sick. So they're, they're yeah. doing something with the chemicals. I'm pretty sure. I mean, I'm not saying for everybody, but it's, it's just weird. What the, yeah. They can eat bread in other countries, but not the. Oh, here's a fun question from Susan. What is your favorite sanctuary in Colorado? Do you know JP who lives there, John Pierre? I do. I went to his, um, actually, he did a fundraiser about a year and a half ago for um, the sanctuary that they're working on. What is it? Harmony? Living with Harmony. Living with Harmony. And I did a, I did a demo for them. Uh, I do know JP. Uh, I am on the board of directors for Love and Arms Animal Sanctuary in Erie, Colorado. And I have been on their board for, I think, three years now. And um, listen, I know so many animal activists in Colorado and there are so many shelters and some get a lot of attention and some get less attention. And I'm just here to say, there are so many people doing amazing work. So I really, you know, I'm gonna feel bad cause I'm not gonna remember everybody, but I, I love broken shovels. Um, there's a rooster uh, sanctuary, at, but yes, my heart goes to love and arms. I spend time up there with the goats. I have a special place in my heart for goats. And um, yeah, and actually cool story about that. Um, well, it's a sad story that got better uh, here in Colorado Springs. You know, we are in ranching land and there is a local nonprofit that was raising two piglets that they named and they had the children meet them from the time they were piglets and they were going to let the children experience their lives all the way up to slaughter. And a local activist was just couldn't bear it. And so she did a fundraiser and, and she was able to raise enough money to buy the pigs from this nonprofit and they, uh, got to move to Love and Arms Sanctuary to live out a life that did not end in slaughter with little yeah. children watching. Thank goodness. Do you know yeah. Dr. Lori Marvis who's in Colorado? I don't. She, you know, she started the plant-based telehealth. I don't know if she even sees people in person anymore, but she's a wonderful plant-based doctor. And she oh. started uh, this telehealth where you could have appointments anywhere in the world. And Dr. Clapper works there, not not in Colorado. He works from Florida. But anyway, I should hook you up with her. She's great. Yeah, that's a great idea. That's really good. So many people, we see that people, especially in smaller towns are like, oh my gosh, I just want to have a doctor who's plant-based. And if nothing else from the pandemic, we've learned you can actually get a lot of great services like this right now in this square. And that includes um, some medical care as well. That's awesome. Yeah, Janet says, I attended a presentation you did in Chicago, Vegan Mania, and learned so much from you and your vegan flavors like black salt and umami. Thanks for all you do to inspire others. Oh, thanks. That's a good, gosh, Vegan Mania. That's when it, that's such a great veg fest. What's your favorite of all the ones you've been to? I met you with the Colorado one, but all the ones you've been to, which has been your favorite so far? Oh, so Colorado obviously is um, near and dear to me because it is my home state veg fest. And it's just wonderful to connect with people from around the state. I got to tell you, the one that blows my mind, two that blow my mind every single time is um, the Atlanta veg fest. Oh. And I think it's because it's just huge. They take, they're just like, it is so diverse. Like it represents who we are, that we are not like one gender. We're not one age. We're not one race. It's so incredibly diverse and well thought out. And the, the presentations are super diverse. So I always um, give a, a big shout out to the Atlanta Veg Fest. I think they do an amazing job. Oh, that sounds like fun. Have you ever been to the Portland one? I've been, but I've never been a presenter. I um, used to represent um, a vegan burger company. So I was there slinging vegan burgers during the Wait, Which I love the Portland. Which company did you? Um, Sunshine Burger. That's a good one. It's a really good one. It's the original burger. It's the very first one. And it's still only made of things like vegetables and grains. And It's really seeds. clean. It's like you yeah, can super, eat those. Yeah. That's yeah. amazing. I did not know yeah. that about you. Some JL trivia. How do you like yeah. that? It's, it's always fun to find out what people's former jobs were. Do you remember your very first job in your whole life? Yeah, I was detasseling corn in Illinois. If people don't know what that is, I don't even think they need to do that anymore. But like in the summer, they would hire us and we made good money back then. Of course, this was in the 70s. Um, and you walk through like every sixth row of corn and you just walk through and you're just pulling 
the tassels off, but you start at like four 30 in the morning and you have to be dressed all the way down because the, the there's dew on the corn and then it starts to get hot and it starts like slicing. It was like the hardest work ever. So that was my first job. But my first job that I like really like felt like a grown up job was at a bookstore. Oh, neat. Have you ever yeah. been to one of those corn mazes where you have to find your way out? Yeah, they're terrifying. They totally freak me I, out. I, I lost. I mean, we we were like <laughs> screaming. We were like, like we could not find our way out. How that is crazy. Oh, yeah. We always it's so interesting. I should I should have asked her before because every time we we see a tattoo, we have a, a, a question about them because That's I know true. they always have meaning. Yeah. Um, well, which one? Which one did you guys see? Uh, Diane, do you, she just said, what are her, what are her tattoos of? Oh yeah. This happened last time, didn't it? You know, I actually might have a few additions since the last time, AJ. I think I did. I got my little V, um, leaves to go in. So this is my animal arm. So, um, it's zoomorphic art. So I've got a lion and an elephant and a rooster and a stag and, um, some other things. I've got a goat here. And then this is my, uh, my culinary arm. So this is a sweet potato vine that goes up and I have a a vegan, a V for vegan chef with a bunch of vegetables. And then I have sea animals on my back. I got my dog oh. and my cat back here, you know, whatever. I'm is, a your, is your dog and your cat actual like photos? Like they did it. Yeah. Them? Yeah. I that actually takes can show a, you because I have a shirt on underneath this. That takes a very special kind of artist to do that kind. How many people take their clothes off during your shows? <laughs> this, you know, this is the first. Finally. I wanted yeah. to be a first at something. Huh. So there is Oliver and Harry. Wow. That, so, so what do you take a picture in and then they do it from the picture? Yeah. The guy I go to, his name is Jeffrey Old Klaus. He's here in Colorado Springs. His ink is vegan and he's an artist. And so anything that I have on me, I had an idea of what I thought I wanted. I would send it to him and I would walk in and I would look at it and it's totally different than what I thought. And it's so much more perfect and amazing. And then I would just like, let him put something permanently on my body. That's how much I trust him. Wow. Well, G, G says my first job was detasting corn in Illinois. I didn't even know deta- I didn't even know what detasting was until today. So, Oh my gosh. What part of Illinois? I grew up in Western Illinois. So I was sort of in like the Monmouth, Galesburg, Stronghurst, Burlington, Iowa area. Where were you? I, I was in Chicago growing up. I don't know where G, G if you see this uh, or hear this. <laughs> Type it in now. Oh, that's great. Well, I, I wish you so much luck with this book. I hope that uh, people will buy it. I'll keep posting the link again because it is Thank terrific. You. Uh, you've got to try the recipes to see how good they are. And well, thanks for having to- me too. You have your show has been absolutely amazing. You've been doing so much for the movement during this um, pandemic time. I'm and trying to I get every single enough. vegan in, on the show before I stop. Haven't you that. at this point? It seems like you have. <laughs> I'm, I'm booked till March 23rd and then I'm going to reevaluate. Uh, and not that I will stop doing shows, but I don't know if I'm going to go live every day, several times a day, you know, after a year. It's good because I don't get a day off then. But, no, I, but there's I so many, you know, there's so many unheard voices, like little treasures in the vegan world that people don't know about. And I just want everybody to know about everybody. And I think, yeah, that I know. Like, you're doing a good thing. You're doing a good thing. I, and I'm having an, I, I haven't had an animal rescue on yet. I would love to, I've been, you know, they, they, they don't always want to come on, but I'm having the gentle giants on soon. That's the elephant one in Thailand. Oh, amazing. Yeah. So oh, that's, that's great. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Well, great. So thank you for the wonderful recipes and guys, come on, buy the book. You got to support thank people you. during the pandemic, you know, because yeah, at least I, I'm so happy that I'm not telling people to buy mine anymore because every day for about 13 days, I was like, buy my book. Cause I was, are you tired bit. of it? I know I'm tired I, of it. I'm like, I can't lie. Well, cause I was doing, <laughs> I was doing a promotion, but uh, yeah. Elise says we are both vegan treasures. Well, thank you very much. Oh, thank you. And Kelly says that was awesome. Thank you. Phone. Susan says this shows a blessing. So thanks. Well, I couldn't have a show without wonderful guests like JL or wonderful live viewers like you guys. Cause I find it's, you know, people say, well, why don't you do it recorded? Well, what does it matter? Because if you don't watch live, what's the difference, right? right exactly. <laughs> I just find that the guests have more energy when they know that people are there. And yeah. because, you know, they can't say, oh, I shouldn't have said that. You know, if you said it, you said it. What can I tell exactly. you? Exactly. <laughs> All right. Well, so other than buying your book, where can people find you? Are you big on Instagram or Facebook or where do you like to go? I am. So my website is JL Goes Vegan. I don't do a lot there, but that's where all my classes are. And so I've been doing, um, I'm no AJ, so I've not been doing what she's been doing at all. But I had um, 
did a 16 week pandemic series, uh, which is just 16 weeks in a row. I did cooking classes uh, for free and the YouTube videos are there. And now I still do classes. I just do them sliding scale. So if you can't pay for the class, you don't have to pay for the class. And if you can, awesome. Um, and so um, if you go to jlgoesvegan.com and click the cooking academy, that's where the classes are. But I am definitely on Instagram and, um, and Facebook. And I wanna do one shout out for anybody watching from Colorado. I'm about to produce the fourth annual Colorado Springs Vegan Restaurant Week. We don't have a bunch of vegan restaurants. We actually only have three open right now, but I have 25 restaurants that for seven days will be creating vegan specials. Um, and it starts on World Vegan Day. And so you can find me on Instagram promoting that as well. So it's a great way to do animal activism and to go out and support restaurants. And you can take the food out and carry out if you're not ready to eat at restaurants yet. That's a great idea. I love it. We Everyone should do that in their city. That's a really I think cool so too. Idea. I actually wrote a blog post for Victoria Moran to explain with um, uh, my friend Carmela about how we do it because it's like, that's not one of those things. I don't own any, like take it, do whatever. I want everyone to be doing this. And so send me an email, message me on Facebook or Instagram and I will send you a link so that you can start doing your own vegan restaurant week. You still run that really large Facebook group. I, I'm, I'm on Facebook, but I'm not on Facebook, but like you had a big air fryer group too. I did, but you know what I did? And people hated me for it. And, and also other bloggers thought I was stupid, but it just proves that I'm not in this for the money. <laughs> um, I had an air fryer group with like 28,000 people, but I had groups for all of these different books that I had written and I couldn't manage it anymore. I don't have a staff. I don't have a team. You're looking at it. This is me. And so I combined all of them um, and I have a Facebook group now called uh, Vegan Cooking with JL Fields. And so I do not have 28,000 people. I have 4,000 people who are really engaged. And so yeah. we do talk about air frying and pressure cooking and all the other things. Well, good for you for doing that. I think people sometimes expect a lot out of us, like that we should yeah. be working and then working for free, answering every question 24 hours a day on every single social media platform. Yeah, it's, it can be daunting. <laughs> A little unrealistic. So uh, Karen says, I love JL. She's so real and down to earth. And Mary says, love your shows and your books, JL. And Carlissa says, love her energy. Absolutely. I agree on all fronts. So if you really love her, put your money where your mouth is and go buy the book. I keep accidentally posting the link to the GI Summit, but let me get that up once again. And we will, uh, yeah, because it really helps when we buy it in the first week, doesn't it, Jail? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Today's the big day. That's why, that's why you were, had to do all your promo. It's really that build up, you know, because, and I always look at it as vegan activism. The more we're getting people going in and typing in plant-based and vegan is popping up for other people when they're on Amazon. And that's basically, I mean, we, you and I are not doing this work to get rich. We're doing it because we're passionate about it. So. Right. And because we yes. love the animals and yes. the planet. Let me get the yes. key. Put that link up one more time. Oh, sorry about that. I'll get I'll get in the show notes for sure. And uh, thank you. I hope you come on again soon. Uh, what's her last name? It's Fields, like Marshall Fields, the story. Exactly. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Any relation? <laughs> no, I wish. <laughs> yeah, they, they closed a long time they ago. They did. They did. Yeah, yeah. Well, thank you for all you do thank for you. the animals and for human health and planetary health. And thanks all of you guys for watching another episode of Chef AJ Live. We have another passionate vegan on tomorrow who also does a lot for animals. Her name is Jane Velez Mitchell. It's a show you won't want to miss. Take care, and I wish you the very best with the book. <laughs>